I'm Shannon. And I'm Lisa. And KK's here too. And you're listening to Black Tivities. A celebration of all things Black. Black culture, Black history, Black perspectives, and Black panache. Celebrating our Blackness doesn't mean exclusion. Everybody's invited, but you got to come in and have a seat. So let the Black Tivities begin. Good morning or afternoon or whenever you're listening. Shout out to the non-American people out there listening. I do see you in the data. I'm your host, Shannon, here with the talented Mona Lisa the Poet and Karen, a.k.a. KK. Both of these ladies are amazing. We've done a lot of serious episodes this season, and today we're just about to be silly. We're talking about black music that makes you pause and say, now what now? Yeah. (laughs) A lot of times with kids, I think we didn't even pause. Like we would just be singing. But now as adults, like you hear those same songs and you like, oh my gosh, like they said that I was saying this. Yes. Yes. What was that song for you guys? Adina Howard. I'll be the freak until the day, until the day. And I was in the back seat of my mama cutlass house, so, and we go boom, boom, and it's time of day. And then, as an adult, I'll be like, "What?" <laughs> T-shirt and panties? No, I had on Care Bear pajamas. I didn't. That that was a no go. So yeah, that's that's me. What about you, KK? My answer is D. All of the above because <laughs> we were saying a whole bunch of stuff and had no idea what the hell we were talking about. So, yeah, all of the above. Oh, another one, another one. Elsie have a pumps in a box. Mm, pumps in a box. <laughs> yeah, girls with the pumps in the box. That was another one. Girl, you couldn't tell me singing. nothing. I think that was singing, <laughs> color me bad. I want to sex you up. <laughs> Girl, hey, hey, that was another song. I was in my mama back seat. I had my finger up to my ear and where I could get my harmony right. So I was like, ooh, 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 ooh. Yeah. <laughs> you had to have that finger on your ear so you could hear right. Make sure you are Yeah, make sure I'm all cute. Hey, beautiful woman. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me nothing, baby. I just knew I could sing too. We're talk about some more of these things. But before we get started, I got to remind the people about this pop-up shop because it's only going to be open till like the end of this month. So go ahead and get your logo tee and rep Black activities. There are also other Black culture tees relating to things that we talked about on the show as well. The link to the shop is in our show notes. Let's get into the big facts. Just for Lisa. I kind of gamified big facts today. So I'm going to say like a plausible or questionable lyric. And I want to see like if you know which song it comes from. Let me sit up. I'm so ready for this. Let me sit up. All right. So I'm not going to sing them. I'm going to say them because if I sing them, you're probably going to know them. Just put your finger up to your ear. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. So the first one. Or it's kind of like two sections here. So one is like some sexually inappropriate. And then the other are lines that like just don't make sense. And so that's why you pause and you're like, what? What did they just say? So these are sexually inappropriate. Okay. Who said beat that P up like Emmett Till? Oh, (laughs) I'm trying to, I got the... Y'all that can't see Lisa, she's like doing a dance. Trying uh, to I'm trying to get the, 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 the beat. I'm trying to get the beat. I know, dang, bro. It was one of the greats. I don't it's know. A, it was Biggie? Lil Wayne. Is it really? Yeah. Mm. yeah. Biggie said a lot of shit stuff. He said a lot of stuff. Girl, <laughs> shit. He said, he said a, said a lot, lot of stuff. shit that was ain't nowhere in the world. And some of it was suspect. No wonder he was dead yet. But go ahead. Yeah, I ran into a lot of Biggie lyrics, but I didn't put any on here. 
Okay, so yeah, that was Lil Wayne in Future's Karate Chop remix. Okay, okay. Now I can hear the beat. That's how I was over here like. <laughs> okay. Who said, y'all gonna get this one. Backstage, underage, adolescent, how you doing? Fine, she replied. BBD. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> So, do me baby yeah, yep <laughs> I was singing that song baby. too yep inappropriate and I, I don't think they sing that song anymore not in 2024 even though they I own tour heard. making bank and they Vegas residency and all that I highly doubt they're saying that backstage <laughs> yeah. underage adolescent how you doing fine, fine. she replied I sighed. I like to do the wild thing. Yeah. See, wow. action took place. Hey, shut yep. up! No, I'm not thinking about it. Oh my god! <laughs> yep. <laughs> but I did run into some information about that song. They said that Buster Rhymes actually wrote that verse. Okay, y'all ain't finna put that on him. Uh uh-uh. uh. <laughs> Mm-mm. You would be surprised some of the stuff these people write. And I, and I don't mean that it's all bad either. I was watching this video yesterday and 50 wrote some stuff for some people and it was not the songs that you thought. It wasn't all hip hop either, which was interesting. You know, that's why these that people are sense. where they are. Yeah, that makes that's sense. A whole nother conversation, though. But yeah, this is interesting. OK, Lisa, let's see if you know this one. Put Molly all in her champagne. She ain't even know it. Oh, Rick Ross fat ass. He <laughs> <laughs> yeah. is bigger than mine. <laughs> he went on to say, I took her home and I enjoyed that. She ain't even know it. Like that is very uh-huh. questionable. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. But that was Rick Ross in Rocco's song. Uh uh-huh. uh. This episode finna mess me up, bro. Y'all have just messed up my playlist for this evening. <laughs> All right, let's see if y'all know this one. Wanna creep on the light raw ass cheeks? I'm sexing raw dog without protection, disease infested. Ooh. Hold on, wait, wait, wait. I have no say idea. Again? Hold on, hold on, wait, wait, wait. Because I'm trying to get the say it again. It says, want to creep on the light, raw ass cheeks. I'm sex and raw dog without protection, disease infested. I'm trying to think. Mm. It's an older one. I'm trying to think because the songs that I listen to, even though they had some foul stuff, still talked about using, wrapping it up and using a jimmy. Yeah, the jimmy. That. That's how yeah. I'm like, who ain't talking about the jimmy? If this is an older yeah. song. It was Foxy Brown. Mm. Now, Foxy Brown. Now she was out there when she was young, because when she came out, she was like 15 years old. I shot and you. I didn't Lisa. know that. Yeah, I didn't know that when she first came out. She was like 15, 16 years old. I love Olga. I think she is who? Gorgeous. Her name is Olga. Oh, Olga. Her real name. That's her her real government. Name? Mm-hmm. Bless it. Oh wow. Okay. Yeah, and she's gorgeous. Yeah, I she is. love her. She is, yeah. but she nasty, disease infested. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, baby. <laughs> oh, you know what? I messed up. Her name is not, her name is Inga. Oh, Inga. It That's wrong. still pretty, though. It's, it's Inga. It's Inga. pretty. Yeah, that is it's pretty. Inga. It fits her. Hmm. Yeah. I that yeah. never have picked that name for her. Yeah, it's Inga. Okay. She's a winner to you, but I know she's a loser. How do I know? Because me and the crew crew used to do it. Poison. 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 I'm doing a dance. Poison. But it was that last part for me. Like you and the whole crew used to do it. But back then running the train, that was like a thing. Girls had no shame getting the train ran on them. That's BBD again. I think a lot of times, you know, one of the things we touched on in one of the shows was about how the interaction now and the things that people did back then that are unacceptable now. I mean, people say all sorts of stuff now. They just probably wouldn't say that. You know, they say other stuff. You know, I remember listening to like 
certain types of hip hop, like Brother Lynch and Brother Lynch talked about the baby was crying. All you heard was this shot and that, you know, the baby got shot and talked about eating people and all sorts of stuff. Oh, <laughs> this Lord. Was, that yeah, is... this was in, in, was this? in the 90s. Oh. This was in the in the 90s. And so I say that because music has always had its plausible stuff. And when you think about some of the old music, because you hear a lot of people saying, oh, y'all complain about our lyrics and they'll pull something up from the 1930s or whenever. And it was saying, you know, we going to do it or, you know, all this thing, a very bluesy music that had crazy stuff in it. It it existed. Y'all, I know y'all, y'all parents, like, because my parents used to listen to, what's her name? Millie Jackson, she said everything. Millie Jackson was saying all sorts of stuff, you know, and it was just hidden, I think, a little bit different. Everything wasn't so out in the open because we weren't allowed to hear no Millie Jackson stuff. She was saying all sorts of See, things. See, my mama and- didn't do like the, like the blues and all that. She didn't do that. Now, don't get me wrong. She, she, let me tell you, we knew it was time to clean up when she, on Saturday when Key Sweat and she would play Barry White to practice what you preach album. <laughs> we'll be in there sweeping. She have us dusted. So I was like, girl, I just wish that you would cause you keep oh, you just keep. <laughs> so, so we knew what time it was. And then when Cash Money Records came out, baby, you couldn't tell my mama nothing. To this day, you know, she, we have to, he's coming to, I think, Atlanta. We got to go. Me and my brother got to go buy tickets because we take it. She said she want to go. So we got to go take us to see Juvenile in Atlanta in a couple months. For the 99 and the 2000. Yes. yes. <laughs> we, one, we took a trip to Florida, a family trip to Florida. OK, we had this big old Sprinter van. My dad was my stepdad was driving. My mom was in the front seat. We had like a little playlist, a group playlist where everybody can just add their songs in queue. Somebody decided to add Juvenile. Back that thing up. As soon as it came on, can you please tell me why my mama had her ass in the dashboard? <laughs> and if you think I lie, I'm going to post it on my page. She don't and it pops up. She don't her care. Baby. She don't care. She do not <laughs> care. But it's just, it's just that, you know, certain music, though, like, yes, we had no business listening to that mess. But still, though, I mean, if it rocked, it had a good beat, it rocked. And that's why we didn't pay attention to lyrics and things of that nature because of the produce and then the, the beats. So I think it still happens. <laughs> yeah. It's got a good beat. Yeah. Yeah. Speaking of cash money taking over for the 99 and the 2000s. OK. Uh, it's not that song. But do you know which song said I like to F him in the A while he beat up the P? Whoa, no. Who said that? Hold on. That if I'm trying to think, who said that? That's in number one stunner. The big oh, time. Oh, yeah, that makes sense. Oh, Birdman yeah. said Bird that? Man. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. <laughs> Bless it. <laughs> Bless it. I can't. All right. Let's switch gears a little bit because sometimes I listen and I pause because stuff doesn't make a lot of sense. I'm like, where did they get that? So here's one that I never understood. Maybe it's deeper than what I'm thinking, but Reebok song, I just do it inward. Who said that? Why he got Reebok song? Hold on. Why is two different brands? (laughs) That's what I never got. That line, like, why don't he say something like, "In I like Nike, I just do it," or "In I'm Ike and I just do it." You know what I mean? Deal with Reebok. Who had a deal with Reebok? I lose it. Uh uh. Rick Ross. What the? I mean, I think that's just a contradiction, right? That's just being contradictory in your lyrics. That's just creative licensure, I think. Yeah. Instead of saying Nike, I just do it. He's probably just saying, you know, oh. it's Reebok, but yeah, I still just do it, you know? He could have been, like, he been it. like, I'm Reebok and I rock the box or something like that. You know what I mean? <laughs> <Yikes>. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, he could have switched it up. 
Mm. Hey, my name Mona Lisa. I write. You know what I'm saying? Just in case anybody want to come up, pop up some of my ideas <laughs> and shit. <laughs> you find me a Mona Lisa the poet <laughs> on your IG. <laughs> I'm gonna throw that out there. <laughs> I think it's just him saying whatever I'm wearing, I I just do it regardless. It don't matter. Okay, but that but, I, I get it. Yeah, yeah. But it's just probably also be you know it's creative licensure. When you are creative, you can pretty much say or do whatever. Right. Yeah. Another one. Rock star flyer than an ostrich, but ostriches don't fly. So are you saying? You don't, you're not flying. <laughs> that was Wells. Oh. Huh. Will Santana, Black Republicans, it's the song. Bless it. Well, that's probably why Black Republicans, ostrich <laughs> don't fly. Don't so do that- hey guys, we want to give them a fair shot. Don't do that to them. <laughs> <laughs> not going to go there. <laughs> I don't know. I'm just saying that could be his take on it. <laughs> it's just it's just a guess, people. It's yeah, just, it's just a, guess. a guess. Okay. Make rap great again. Go ahead. Wheezy F baby and the F is for nom or phenomenal. So Will Wayne. That's, it's definitely Wayne. Yeah. But F phenomenal starts with P H. Again, creative license. <laughs> I think that's all that is. I say what's next, what's next, what's in XET. That sound like he got it wrong and was just like, we ain't doing no nother take <laughs> on it. We just going to leave it like that. That was Warren G. <laughs> Who's that? Warren G. Warren G. Warren G. Oh, rest in peace. And- hey, Dad. Isn't he yeah, he ain't dead. Dog. I was just Warren thinking God. Warren G. I don't know. Nate. Who died? Who died? He's in the Nate dog. Nate, shit. I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't got not one right. Go ahead, y'all. <laughs> this one, I don't know this artist, but he said, first family will gradually lift that A up like gravity. Like gravity? Yeah, but gravity keeps you on the ground. Yeah. Wow. I, I, I'm, I'm going to let y'all have this one. <laughs> <laughs> That's Lil Fame, but I don't know who Lil Fame is. And then OJ, the juice man, said. Hey, I've been listening to him hard this past couple of days. But for some reason, it's been popping up on my Spotify list. <laughs> <laughs> he said, moving in a Grand Prix, same color as Thunder. I mean. But Thunder is a sound. He means lightning? Yes. No, I think he meant that. And I think these people are just doing creative license. I think they're just like, oh, that, it sounds provocative. <laughs> they're just doing that whole thing. It gets the people. Wow, clean. that sounds provocative. I'm saying I was trying to make it make sense, though. Because <laughs> I'm for OJ the Juice, man. Let me tell you, I'm a challenge of anybody. When you having a rough morning, on your way to work, that drive, put in, make the chop say, hey, quarter key, half key, old key, hey, play that song <laughs> real loud. I promise it'll change your, I'm telling you, change your whole mood. It's something about that song. Make the chop. <laughs> I'm telling you. All right, I'm going to do that. I'm telling you. As long as it don't make me go in here and deal with this person who is Mm-mm. a hot mess Mm-mm. in a no, different way. You, it changed your mind. You being a rockin'. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> make you feel like you're going to pick up a bag, like you're going to make a transaction. Going to, going to work. Hey, hey, let me tell you, you know, it's same me. I play that song. I walk in the work. Hey, how y'all doing? Because <laughs> it's like I'm, I'm going to get this bag. Sometimes it's like that, though. Sometimes yeah, you gotta. It's change you gotta your put whole a little trap on in the morning. How you doing? I know y'all out to get me, but I'm just saying hi oh, anyway. Lord. Oh, Lord. Hey, <laughs> I don't even think about it no more. I'm just, I'm here, baby. I got a job to do. They like, did you hear about so-and-so, baby? I don't know who that is. They be like, but they work here. I don't know. I don't know who that is. <laughs> but that's another episode. <laughs> so for the discussion here. Okay. There's only two questions I have. One, when you hear lyrics, 
like some of these examples that make you stop and like think what goes through your mind? For me, it'd be like the the shock. I mean, even though we know it's out there, that shock value never goes away. But just by what you've presented to me in the song, the all of these songs, I know these songs. But when it comes to rap, I have came to the conclusion I don't pay attention to all of the lyrics that's on there. Whereas R&B, I pay attention to it because I'm singing along. But that shock value never goes away. So and and it's hard to say, oh, songs nowadays, like we give Funky Red a hard time. Funky Red. (laughs) Any of her songs could have been on here as well. Like I looked at the lyrics for WAP. I was like, oh, my God. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, we give give them a hard time. But again, like, I mean, I'm woman enough for as an adult to admit that it's the same. They just a little bit more out with it. You know what I mean? Like their voice is louder. You know what I'm saying? Than the songs that back then when, you know, the other artists did it. Their presence is louder, is bolder. So it makes it seem like it's standing out or in, in all reality. It's the same as the, what's, what it's, what's it's always been. I'm the person singing loud and gets all the words wrong. So. Um. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I'm the person that's just listening. And I'm only, I mean, for me, it's like if it's, if I'm out somewhere and it's a turn up, I'm going to dance regardless because mm-hmm. I love to dance. So I'm always looking for an opportunity to dance. So I'm not paying attention then to listen to the lyrics. Uh-huh. But if it comes to me like in my car or something like that, I am listening. And sometimes I feel like their voices to me, aren't necessarily louder. We just don't have the variety we used to have. We used to have a variety Uh and now we don't. It's all of this stuff, plausible, questionable lyrics. But when you talk about like Freaknik time and, and all of that, we had Color Me Bad. We had Color Me Bad. We did. But we also had N.W.A. We also had Anita Baker. We also had good rock music. We had Anita Baker. We had everybody. We had so many, so much of a variety that it really didn't matter. So you weren't just hearing one thing. You were hearing romance and love. You were hearing booty shaking music. We had Uncle Luke. You were hearing every single type of music you could think of. Even the the genres that we weren't listening to as, as hard were still amazing because I there's this uh, restaurant that I like to go to out here. And I'm telling you, they have the best playlist that's like 90s. And I'm like, oh, this right here. You know what I'm saying? So you it's like it was like flipping a station. You could flip 90. the station and no matter what, still hear something good. That's my favorite time of music. Is that right. yours, Shannon? Yeah, I stay in the 90s. Me, Me too. too. Me yeah. too. Yep. Because yeah. we had everything, y'all. That's the difference. We had plausible lyrics, but we had so much. There was so much good music coming out at the time. We had Keith Murray. You know what I'm saying? We mm-hmm. had... X clan we had all of that we had that but we also had like TLC you know right. we had all the groups everything you could think of escape SWV we had so much and when you think about like a SWV album or escape album they going to have a praise song in the beginning praising god it's then they going to have a what was the song I'm with your man or, or something like that that's on there you know and then we had a, also playing on the radio Moke and stuff he's mine you may have had him once but I got, got him all the time, time. you yeah. ain't yeah. can sleep at night <laughs> <laughs> Don't try to dry your eyes. Right, right. <laughs> Girl, I took, let me tell you, I even took it to the next step. I'm, I supposed to be in the bed, right? My mama let me have, I have a little radio in my room. I had it on the quiet storm, the quiet storm on the radio. And that song come on. I had this little fan. I'd be in the fan. Singing in the fan. Girl, you couldn't tell me nothing. Singing in the fan. I sound just like her. And can't nobody say it. Can't nobody tell me nothing. I knew I sound like them. What? 
<laughs> yeah, it's hard. Like my kids will ask me to play music in class sometimes. And I'm like, y'all, I can't Mm-mm. can't play nothing because nope. everything has something in it that's not appropriate for school. Right. So girl, well, then you better get the play the kids by volume <laughs> 239. Do you think that the sexually explicit and like inappropriate lyrics actually influence the culture, or do you think the culture is yes. influencing the lyrics? Uh, I I think the mu is the music influencing the culture. Because back then, yes, we we had obviously we just said this music that was inappropriate, but that still didn't deter us from being ladylike. So maybe I don't know, maybe it's the culture. I don't I don't know. I all I can say is back then, yeah, we had music that was inappropriate, but it still didn't deter us from being like unladylike. Whereas now you have music that same music. And it's okay where girls are okay with saying that they do inappropriate things to male body parts and having babies and twerking hours after you had a baby and posting on social media. And I, I, don't, I, I just think that, I don't know, how, how, would I, how would I say that? Because playing devil's advocate here, like, okay. could you argue that people were out there doing this stuff anyway? And now it's just reflecting in the music. Maybe so. Yes. Now you put it that way. Yes. They're more out and about. Yeah. Like they're a little bit more free with it. KK, I'm interested to hear what you say. You always have some good insight on things like this. So a couple things about this. When you think about back then in the 90s, if you watch the Freak Nick documentary, which I think was incredible. Yeah. You know, we talk about how great the music was and all of that. So one of the other things that was happening at that time was we saw Kirk Franklin come in, switch up gospel music altogether. He created his own lane. And in the process of doing that was ostracized and people talk crazy about him. That ain't of God. God don't need no remix. You know, all of this stuff happening. And it was incredible. So then you had gospel music was also top tier at that time too. While also at Freaknik, the people who was listening to gospel and R&B and all these great genres were being sexually assaulted at Freaknik after a while. You see what I'm saying? So, so it wasn't necessarily, I mean, music can, I think, it, it's a dual exchange. It's a bilateral exchange. So the music can influence the culture and the people and vice versa. So I think that also happens. But as parents, parents and people who are responsible for the next generations coming up, I think there's always some music that we can pay, play for and with our kids. So my bonus kids really do love 90s music. They're born in like 2000 and something, but they love 90s music. Why? Because me and their dad always played music for them. So whether it was way back something that my parents used to listen to in the 70s, they understand Al Green. They understand Marvin Gaye. They know all of that. They also are aware of groups from, you know, like a uh, Boy George, I'll tumble for you. I'm you know, so they, they, yes. they they know all yes. of these things too. So so they have karma, 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 chameleon. You know, they have all of this stuff. And so that's it. That's it. And they've been exposed to it all. My favorite artist of all time is Prince. You can't tell me nothing wrong about (laughs) Prince. You know, he's a genius. And that doesn't mean I don't like Michael, but just Prince, there's something in my heart about him as being the greatest. And so they're aware of these. They're also aware of of Miss Lauren Hill. They are aware of the goddess Badu, you know, so all of this they're aware of. And it's our responsibility to expose them to more. I don't care who's out here. You know, there's artists I can't stand. And it's like, you know, I'll be like, oh, you listening to that? You know, and I talk smack about it. But I also will turn up to it if it's playing and I'm out because I don't care about them. I care about the fact that I'm exposing those who I am responsible for to real music and music that actually had instruments too. That's a whole nother conversation. Look at greatest, one of the greatest lyric writers, lyricists of all time. Look what Scarface did on his tiny desk. 
that was immaculate, right? Immaculate. And you, as a poet, Lisa, I know you yes. know lyrics, yes. Yes. words matter. We sense. care. That brother, the I mean, the delivery was perfection, uh-huh. and he is my favorite. And Ice Cube, when he used to write, you can't touch. And I love Kendrick. You know the whole thing that the whole like this thing and why I heard the best explanation for it from a comedian called Josh Johnson about the whole Kendrick Drake diss. But I also think, in my opinion, the best diss song ever was No Vaseline because Ice Cube was writing his ass off. You can't touch a real writer like Ice Cube and Scarface. These dudes blew some of these new cats out the water. So I don't care about these new cats or they bag or they designer. I like I still like niggas with oversized clothes. I don't want no (laughs) skinny jeans, nigga. I need Tim's. You know what I'm saying? I need that whole New York. Please give me Method Man. I will take him (laughs) over these future niggas any day. I mean, you you know, I don't think I, don't I ever said nigga this man. much, but it, it is what it is. <laughs> Shout out to Method Man. That's all I'm going to say. I ain't going to say nothing else. He married. Ooh, Meth. I knew he was fine back then when he had hair sticking up, the contact yeah. in his yes. eye, and he was looking all mm-hmm. crazy. Mm-hmm. Like, sweet morning, morning dude. Yeah. I t- and I was like, he trying to hide the fact that he's pretty. And I was like, uh-huh. oh, he's what? I've never heard yeah. anyone say it that way. But yes, mm-hmm. he was hiding that, you know, yeah. and it was like he just wanted to be grimy. Like I like grimy East Coast, New York. That's when I fell in love with that. You know, that whole swag, that whole style. D- you couldn't tell me nothing about him or or the. Oh my God, them dudes from all the dudes came out of New York. Keith Murray, I, you know, the most beautifulest thing in the world. You know, all yeah. these dudes that was making music like that. I just like niggas with Tim's. Okay. <laughs> well, I'm, me more or less, I like the fact that, okay, we can't shy away from rappers from down south. And for me, the king of the South. And this is my opinion. Yeah, I know T.I. want that title. And no, don't get me wrong. I get T.I. props where it's due. But I feel like it's Andre 3K. Like, who? I, that's Andre, Andre 3000. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I, I yeah, have yeah, yeah. To. Because if you go back and you yeah. listen to the lyrics and the things that he was saying, he wasn't on no shady shit. He wasn't talking all the time about, you know, saying drugs and all of that. Like, he was speaking knowledge. Like for real. So, and that's just my opinion. But yeah, I have to give credit what credit's due on now. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. And I'm weird. And I'm weird and I liked his outfits. When he peeped out <laughs> with the, the, the football shoulder pads and the, and the platinum wig, I'm like, you know what? He different. <laughs> but regardless of the words he's speaking, you don't care about all that. I still hit. Like, whatever. And I had to tell you somebody else from the South, too, Lisa. I had the pleasure of hosting an event for the beautiful David Banner to come out here to Denver. And he oh, spoke. I just it. Oh, I just put it. it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> baby, listen, baby. That's how I felt. Hold on. That's Hold how on, I wait, felt. Wait, 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 wait. Listen, babe, if you listen to this episode, just I apologize now. <laughs> <laughs> I apologize right now. Just look, I'll buy you some shoes. Don't, don't, don't. Just don't even worry about it. <laughs> Respect me. This is just opinion. This is before you. This is before you. So don't even worry, worry about it. I never meet these people, babe. Don't even worry about it, all right? <laughs> I just want to put <laughs> But yes, David Banner, especially now, Silver Fox. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yep. Yep. David Banner with no shirt on. I was like, whoo, my God. So. So, yeah, I know this is supposed to be about plausible lyrics, but I mean, even with that, I mean, there's such a variety. There's such a variety out here that, yes, lyrics are plausible, but I don't live in the possibility of the lyrics. If I'm turning up, I'm turning up. But there's so much goodness out here. There's such good stuff out here that I just ignore the nonsense. Like, I'll I'll tell you something, Shannon. 
one of the things I talked about at the poetry venue was that you don't need to be profane to be profound. Yeah. Right. So it, 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 the, the profundity is more important than the profanity. And I would say that all the time. And with that in mind, we could easily identify. And I know you can do this, Lisa. If somebody's getting on the mic and they just getting on the mic because they feel like, hey, I can say a bunch of cuss words on the microphone. You can feel that energy. Yeah. And the poetry is usually not that good because they're focused more on that. And that's why people say the music is not that good. Like things will be peppered in there. But people like we mentioned who have the ability to be profound and brilliant and black and excellent, that's what stands out. So the profanity and and plausibility, I've never given that much credence because I'm more concerned with the genius and the excellence of the artist. I agree 100 percent with that, KK. Like I want I think if you can say stuff without saying stuff, that makes you great. The way you use the words, if you can say it and I don't even know that you're saying it. That's what I like. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Lisa, let's hear your piece. Okay. So this piece is called Lyrically. You ever walk into work and your mood shifts? They ask if you're okay, your smile glistens, and then it turns into an instant frown. They don't know Uchi Wally has you in your seat thinking about the good old days when mommy was a freak. When you thought every meeting in the bedroom was a special treat and the appropriate healing to a breakup was facing the fact that by listening to it on repeat to you putting what that situation it was where you were when you were on your back. Things sound sweet, but in reality, the hit wasn't really a hit. The brain is in charge of the whole defeat and your favorite song was really because of that, the beat. Hmm. Thank All you. Right. <laughs> All right. I recognize some of those references in there. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. yes, yes. Yep. <laughs> All right. So let's call the culture. What are you calling the culture to do, Lisa? I thought, okay, 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 okay been on it. I was going to let her go ahead and go because our minds are short. I'll go ahead and just say, okay. you know what? Music is music. Everybody had their own thing. But just don't, yeah, it influences, but let it influence you positively. I understand that some things may not be that great. Some of the things that they say, yes, there's plausible moments, but don't let that influence you to be, what's what's the word? Just remain positive. Be ladylike. Be a gentleman. Be a man. And don't let that influence you to be less than. Um, Music is something that I'm very passionate about and that we as a culture, music comes from us. We are the creators of music and it's in our ancestry and our DNA. And that's what we need to share with with the those who are coming behind us. We need to share that with them, that it is all, whether it's Beyonce doing country or someone else doing country, explore all genres of music so that you have a rich catalog in your heart because it lives within you. Once it's in you, it's in you. That's why you can recall the lyrics and, and everything like that. And it's, it's our responsibility to make sure that what goes in us, whether it's gospel, country, hip hop, R&B, all of this that we created, whatever it is, we need to make sure that the next generation has a full catalog of good music in their hearts and minds to continue carrying the legacy on. And I will say this final thing, I heard it a few years ago, Someone said the greatest music ever has already been created. In other words, we'll get nothing great now that everything has already been created. And so if in fact that is true, if you believe that, then just make sure you are exposing those you love, young, old, those who are coming behind you, expose them to this rich catalog of creative 
sound and feeling and music with and without instruments, expose them so that they too can have it live with them and carry on for the future. Hmm. Yeah, I agree with some of what you said, KK. I don't agree about their. I, well, I don't know. That wasn't you saying it. That was other people saying it. But yeah, it made me sad. Has some hot fire. So I don't know. <laughs> They haven't put it out yet, but what I hear from them is like crazy. So there is more great music to be made. Uh But Uh I I do agree that we need to show the greats to our children. I saw a reel one time that someone was going around asking like a younger generation if they knew who Outkast was and like none of them knew who Outkast was. So that's a tragedy. Uh-huh. My dude. Yeah. Uh-uh. I'm an educator. So my call to action is related to education. Education is important, but I'm not just talking about the traditional schooling. I'm talking about life skills. The Bible says train up a child in the way he should go. And when he's old, he will not depart from it. We got to teach our sons how to respect and treat women. And our girls, how to respect themselves and how to choose men who respect them as well. So I think if we can get that right, then there's not going to be as much of these questionable lyrics out here because they're going to respect women more than that. I'm also calling the culture to click the little plus in Apple podcast or the subscribe button in YouTube. We love to read your reviews and the five star ratings on Apple Podcasts help us. So don't forget to do that. And don't forget to grab yourself a black activity in the pop up shop until we meet again. King and Queens keep doing big things. Let's go. Let's go.